Hi everyone and welcome back to another video. Um, today I will be talking about what we brought during our long ride, our DIY CTGF, which stands for the Connecticut Grand Fondo. So in the last video, I talked about the prep work that needs to get done first before you take on um, a DIY Grand Fondo of your own. So if you missed that video, I will link it to the top, either up here or up here. And as always, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you don't, please share in the comments section below how I can improve for the next time. And also please subscribe if you haven't done so already. It does help my channel to grow. Uh, I will be celebrating a hundred subscribers by doing a century ride. So I don't know when that'll be hopefully soon. So let's get into this. First things first, um, I live here in Connecticut and in Connecticut during the summertime, we get 100% humidity. Uh, so 85 degrees Fahrenheit might sound good for everyone, but with 100% humidity can feel very uncomfortable. That's because there's a lot of moisture in the air and there's not a lot of oxygen. And so you have a hard time taking in oxygen. You have a hard time breathing. In addition to that, you sweat a lot. And so the first thing to keep in mind is to stay hydrated. We brought with us two water bottles um, and one of the water bottles had the electrolyte mix in it and the other one had just plain water. It's important to have an electrolyte mix to prevent any cramping. You don't want any cramping in the middle of a climb uh, because it is not a pleasant thing. I've never personally felt cramping, but I know for certain that it is not pleasant. Uh, the electro mi electrolyte mix that I use is by First Endurance uh, Electrolyte Mix, and this is the electrolyte fueling system. So I have that in one water bottle and I have uh, plain water in the other water bottle. Um, mix two scoops. Um, it says to mix two scoops of this uh, with water. Just shake it up and you get just a simple electrolyte drink. Uh, sometimes I even bring an extra packet, which I brought here with me. So this packet comes, sometimes um, it comes with a free sample if you happen to get an uh, order from First Endurance. And so I just bring that, mix it up just in case. However, in the ride that we did, the Connecticut Grand Fondo, I did run out of water. I have run out of water. Uh, both bottles have been out. Thankfully, Jason brought three uh, bottles of water with him and so he was able to uh, give me some water. But, uh, thank God Jason brought um, had enough with him uh, so I was able to to get something from him so now you're probably wondering Joy why don't you just go out and buy a water bottle at a convenience store? Well I didn't do that because for one I forgot my mask and so that was out of the question. And um, so just to keep in mind, if you want to attempt your own DIY Grand Fondo, um, if, especially if it's going to be more than five hours long, bring three bottles with you and obviously bring your mask. Uh, that extra water does help. Now on to the bags. Um, I brought, I have one saddle bag and this saddle bag um, actually carries all the tools that I need for in case there is anything that goes wrong with a bike. And I also have a top tube bag. This top tube bag, I will link in the description below. It is by Rock Bros. And I actually got this from Amazon. It's a really good purchase. And what I put in here, um, it's currently it's empty. What I put in here is, uh, or not many, not very many things in here, but the, um, I have hand sanitizer. Um, I have some gels. Um, I put extra, uh, batteries for the camera um, along with an extra camera in here. A lot of the food actually fits in my back pockets and so most of the foods ended up in my back pocket so that I have the top tube bags to just free up for other stuff. The top tube bag does come in handy if you want to eat on the go and so you open up the zipper and then you're gonna just um, you know use one hand to steer and then eat with the other hand. So let's talk about safety. And I am so happy to have purchased these lights. Um, these are by Lazine and they are 600 XL, so 600 lumens. And I have the rear lights as well. 
Uh, I'm not sure how many lumens the rear lights are. So uh, this is, uh, hasn't been fully charged yet because um, I used it on my last ride. And you could tell at how, whoops, you can tell how bright it is. So this is the front lights. I still have to charge it. Um, and then this is the rear lights and the, the rear lights is neat because you have different options of how you want the lights to look. And currently this is my setting for that. Um, and I like that because it doesn't blind the motorists if they are, if they happen to be um, behind me. And I also like the other one, the, the flashing light for the front lights. So it's the same uh, reason it doesn't blind the motorists. If they are coming towards me. Um, so the lights are great. Um, we have them obviously set to uh, flashing and they are bright and allows the cars to see us. So they are perfect. The previous ones that we purchased were from Amazon, kind of like these cheap ones, and they were not as bright and they didn't hold the, um, the brightness for as long. Um, and these can last up to eight hours, which is perfect because our ride was only five hours or around five or six hours. It's important to remember that uh, for rides lasting more than five hours, you really need reliable lights. I don't really care if it adds extra weight to my bike. If it can save my life, then it's something that I am going to invest in. I apologize, my neighbors across the street, or my neighbors next door, I mean, are jackhammering. So um, you might hear some of that in the audio. So hopefully they stop. Um, okay, so let's talk about bike computers. Um, I have this Wahoo Element, and this is by far my best investment. Um, we love it. So I map a lot of my rides using Ride with GPS, and then I sync that with the Wahoo. It's super easy to follow once you have it on and once you have it going. You can customize the screens for whatever you want to see, and um, you probably need to be a little tech savvy to do the customization. I used to use my phone for navigation before I even had a bike computer and I found that I had to carry with me a power bank which is pretty heavy and in order to use my navigation on my phone so that it doesn't drain the battery. The problem with that is sometimes I do forget the power bank at home and so it's very frustrating and I don't want to have to deal with that if I am preparing for a ride. So um, with the bike computer, with the Wahoo, I guess it's safe to say I don't really have to worry about that since I don't do 17 hour long rides. Lastly, we brought our cell phones. Um, I think it's safe to say that everyone brings their cell phones with them wherever they go. Um, I definitely think it's important to disconnect, especially while you're riding. I don't use my phone while riding. Um, I only use it when I'm off the bike, when I have to take a picture of something. So I keep my phone mostly on airplane mode to conserve battery. So if you have issues with your phone draining battery, airplane mode definitely helps. Um, in case of any emergency, you can definitely use your phone for that as that's what most people, I think most people use their phones for um, these days. Well, that's it for today's video, everyone. Thank you so much for taking the time and watching and supporting our channel. Uh, be sure to subscribe if you haven't done so already, and I'll see you again next time. Enjoy the ride!